so grateful. And looking at the news this morning, their folks are already lining up in Times Square waiting for midnight to watch a ball drop. Hallelujah. But God has blessed us to come to the house of worship and give him praise. Uh, it's so he came to the world, but so many of them have rejected him. But I'm glad to be in the house with a bunch of folks that are looking to the Lord. Has he been good to you? Did he bring you through anything this year? Come on, shout out to the hallelujah to the Lord. God for. Do y'all want to feel the purpose of God? Yeah. My purpose is to give praise and glory to his name as we receive Pastor Vanessa, the messenger of God. I've got a river of life flowing out of me. Make the lane to walk and the river blind to see. Open prison doors
for the folks to see and feed off of. A mustard seed. Let's move back to the mustard seed. When we look at a mustard seed in comparison to a tree, a mustard seed produces shrubs, not a tree. Y'all know what a shrub is. It's like a bush. I can help you understand that. But if you understand a mustard seed and how it grows, and in Bible times it was well in demand, a mustard seed would grow a shrub or a bush up to 10 feet tall. And the leaves of that mustard seed was the resting place for birds. And not only did the birds sit on the leaves of the tree or the bush, but they fed off of that bush, that 10 foot tall mustard seed. So people would go to places where they could get the mustard seed and grow them because then they would have a vast land of these trees and bushes and the birds would come and feed off of them and everyone be, would be sheltered or in an area where they were comfortable not under a tree but under the feeding of a mustard seed bush that came from a little seed. Where am I going with this? During the course of 2017, many of us felt that what we might have had to offer in ministry and had to offer to the world was too minute and too small. Not enough. Not shiny enough. Not educated enough. Not dressed enough. And God has placed something in each one of us that if we could acknowledge that what God has given you, which might be so small, it's just enough to take care of a big deal. The title of my message today is, It Started Out Small, But It Turned Into Something Big. Right, right, right. And sometimes we wonder why we haven't gone to where we're supposed to go. It's because you haven't put value Amen. on what God has already given you. I don't mean the value that makes you proud and boastful, but I mean put value and gratitude that God has gifted each and every one of you. God has talented you. God has filled you with something that's special, and it starts out real small. But that something real small can develop into something that those that are fighting or those that are in need or those that are needing rescue can come and sit on your leaf. The question is, is that leaf heavy enough to hold the bird? Yes. Is that leaf strong enough to deal with what is the issue in that individual's life? Yes. Because not only will he rest there, but he'll feed there. What you have received of the Lord over the years, over and over and over again, all the Mondays Bible study, all the Tuesdays Bible study, all the Fridays evangelism, all the Sunday services, all the revivals, all the conferences, what have you done with that stuff that you've taken in? Now I have to revert back to that stream. As the stream flowed, the scripture says that not only did it produce large places, vast places where the animals could feed, but it also had some marshy places. Yeah. And if you all go down in Kearney, you'll see what I'm talking about, marshy places. Under the skyway, under the bridge, you see areas of water that's good for nothing. Don't want to walk in there. Don't want to drink it. It's polluted. And anything that's poured in it is only going to get mixed, mixed in and be no good. And some of us, all that God is trickling down, we couldn't stand, we, we couldn't deal with the overflow of the Holy Spirit, but when he just comes by and touches us and puts an anointing and brings a blessing our way, he's saying, what you doing with it? Are you a your territory with what I've sent your way, or oh, are you becoming a marshy place that is just sitting there? The best illustration for, for all of this that I'm trying to bring together in a nice way is to say that in observing nature, in observing our experiences, 
Okay, I talked about what happened to me. But can we take these experiences that we have and connect it with a spiritual relationship with God and say, God, okay, how you going to use this one? Okay, this has happened to me. But in your word, see, when we get these scriptures and say, read the word every day, and folks tell me, I don't know how to pray. Folks say, I don't understand the scripture. You read the scriptures, the scriptures will bring you back to how to pray. After you read a verse of scripture, you say, uh, 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 the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Lord, I thank you because you're my shepherd and there's nothing that I need that you're not going to take. I don't, that you're not going to take care of. I don't have to want for anything. You understand? Oh, bless the Lord on oh, my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Lord, today I'm going to bless your name. I'm going to praise you. I'm going to glorify you because you're good. If you would but take the little trickle. It's not the big thing to me. It's just a little trickle. Yes, yes, yes. Of his Holy Spirit. Thank you. It starts off small. But it's going to grow into something big. Amen. God wants to set us up for 2018. We've been in this building since 2003. We struggled through from 97 to 2003 trying to get in here fight after fight. Battle after battle with the enemy, but we gained the victory. We came in here and we had visions of doing great things. But what has happened? What has happened? We talk about what we hear in the Word of God, and we need, we don't need a new thing. All right. Because some of us haven't managed living what we already hear. Some of us struggle in our spiritual walk right where we are right now. The same truth of God which greatly blesses when richly received will greatly harm if it's rejected. And as I was doing the study, I understood so clearly that we come and we hear the word. Men are sometimes gospel hardened, yet not because they have heard the gospel too much, but because they have heeded it too little. Ouch. It stagnates in them. They hear in vain. Learn, but do not practice. Feel, but do not make decisions. Resolve, but do not perform. You come in here and you hear the word preached that when you say, Bishop, that was a good word you preached on Sunday. And you walk out and leave it. Come on. And then there's some of us that take it home and put it on the shelf. All right. There's some of us that just don't do it. It's in the car. And if you ask them what was the message, yeah, we had a good time. But did you have a good time off of the emotion? I, I, was, I was looking at one statement that was made that the world looks at the church and sees the emotion of the church, but they don't see the effect of the church on the people in the church. And it only takes the planting of one little mustard seed in you that you can make a change in a vast area. You can do a whole lot with it if you just use it. Amen. Yes. And then sometimes the problem is that we mingle the spiritual information with corruption. We take it in and then we try to justify our own ugly ways of living. Y'all didn't get that. You take in the good news of Jesus Christ, but then we excuse the behavior and the attitude and the lack of connection and love because you're dealing with yourself. As Elder Kenny said, we've got to become selfless. We can't help ourselves or others because we're selfish. Amen. 
If the word of God produces little or no good effects in us, let us thoughtfully consider what is the matter. Are we wayside hearers or rocky ground hearers or thorn patcher hearers? Some of us are all three. Among those who are really producing some fruit of good living, why is it that some are so much more benefited by a sermon or a lesson than others? Let's look at that. One, because they are not aware of it. They think it is well with them. I hear the message, but it, in other words, I hear the message, but that doesn't apply to me. That's a good word, but people should be here to hear it. Folks were missing from church today. It wasn't for me. It starts even before the preacher gets to you. It starts with us. That's right. Amen. And then he brings it to the table, or she brings it to the table for the rest of us. The word has got to be applied to each and every one of us. Every time we come, we need to come to receive something from God so our lives can be changed. If you look in the word of God, most of the preaching is, is once you have received Jesus Christ, this word is for us. Amen. Yes. If you're not a believer, you're not reading it. So the word is to the church. It's for the world, but it's to the church. It's to help us stay, hallelujah, it's to help us stay right with God. That which is a river of life to others is not so to them. They don't see it as a river of life. Folks will stand off of, in, in the scripture, it talks about when the prophet was being shown the rivers. There were areas that he could walk in, and, and over the years, people have made songs about it. Water came up around my feet. Then it moved to the ankles and it moved to the knees. And when it got to the street, that's all that said that song came from. Okay? It got to the point where he couldn't stand it because it got so deep and overflowing that he had to step back from it. But God wants us to understand that he is willing to overflow you with his blessings, but it starts as a little thing. A man that's got a million dollars don't need a million dollars. You understand? He, he will cause it to multiply, but he's already feeling comfortable to set. Now, the person that doesn't have a million dollars don't really know, Mr. Kitty, what to do with it. Am I correct? And they mess it up. Y'all seen that over the years and in, this, in, this, in the times of, oh, somebody won, oh, you know, five million dollars. Then they go out and they plan a wedding with a horse and carriage going down High Street. Big wedding, marrying somebody that's saying, oh, I'm so happy to be married to him for the minute because I'm going to get that money. And now he's a faithful deacon in a church with no money. And saying, pay your tithes and be faithful and God will take care of you. And see, we come in looking for the big thing and God says, use the little bit I gave you. Because when you start using the little bit that I gave you, it's going to become big. Yes. I looked at not only the mustard seed, but the scripture in Mark also talks about the leaven, the yeast. Y'all ever look at the seeds of the yeast? Little tiny seeds, you put it in a bowl with some warm water, and you watch it bubble. But once the yeast has been prepared and added to the flour, and I didn't do it, I didn't bring them, I didn't it, I don't have no, no rolls in here today. Oh, I got one of them messages. I thought about it, but I didn't do it here. That, before you can put that bread in the stove, that yeast causes the dough to rise. But anybody that knows anything about baking bread, 
The first time it rises, can anybody tell me what happens? You beat back down. And then you wait a little bit longer and it rises again. And I think my mother would do it about two or three times and then you have to sit and wait for the form rolls to rise before you could actually put it in the oven. Now that's a process. And if you want to look at that in the spiritual sense, when we take in the Spirit of Christ into our lives, when we allow the Holy Spirit to walk in there, we're not overwhelmed with all of Him at one time because we become crazy, foolish people and we think we got more than, we think more of ourselves than we are. But if we start with the small and allow him to grow himself, the Holy Spirit, in us. But then the scripture says, I beat my body. I got to work on me some more. I can't think I'm all that just because I came up one time. Even if you use a bread making machine to bake your yeast and leave that machine running and it does all of its process, when you take the dough out of the machine, you still got to beat it back down again and, and form it. And God wants to beat all that foolish stuff out of us, all that nasty stuff out of us, all that selfish stuff out of us, so that he can cause us to rise to perfection in him. It starts out as something small, but turns to something big. What we know about the Lord, he's saying share it. Give it out to somebody. What we've experienced in him already, just that little bit, might be the testimony, might be the same. See, when I fell down the stairs, God worked on me at the bottom of the stairs because first of all, one of the questions they asked me when I got to the hospital was, did you hit your head? They kept asking the question, did you hit your head? And I remember as I was coming down the stairs, I remember my face sliding down the cement. But when I got to the bottom, there were no scars and no injury to the head. And sometimes people are looking for certain things to come out of you that you can share. Because for me, that's a testimony. My head slid on that seat but I'm still in my right mind. Don't have no permanent scars from being on the stage. You understand? The scripture, along with the writers and those that have studied, said, take your experiences connected to a spiritual reference and tell somebody about Jesus. Take your experiences on a daily basis and the scriptures that you're reading and say, God, how do you want me to apply this mustard seed today to create a bush so that somebody can come and sit on my leaf and be fed and grow. Y'all get that? Take the trickle of the Holy Spirit that's running down the stream that's running through your life that he wants to broaden and make a vast place so that somebody that connects to you that don't even have the promises that you have as a child of God can be blessed and get part of what you get just because you gave out to them. We getting ready to go into 2018 and we don't know what the year holds. So true. Amen. Brother Mike, I, I, I'm doing this to you right now. You sitting there and oftentimes you get discouraged and feeling bad because you in that wheelchair. And you bring to, and I said to you last week or whatever it was I spoke to you, I said, you might not be able to do what you used to do. But if you will allow God to come in and fill your life, he can take the experience of what you've gone through to say, but I'm still here. Brother Mike comes and he says he sees things that need to be done in the church 
say he can't do that because he's in a wheelchair. I said, but you can take your skills and teach somebody else. God wants to use each one of you to bring somebody else in the kingdom. And as we move into 2018, we need to make that our goals. And what was so wonderful, when it got to the end of the scripture in Ezekiel 48 and 35, part of the scripture says, and the name of the city from that day shall be, the Lord is there. Now that just awesome, that was awesome to me, Elder. What I'm about to accomplish, what I'm about to do, where I'm about to go, I can feel good about it. Because the Lord is there. Take the Lord with you everywhere you go. What I need to do, I can do all things because the Lord is there. Take the limits off of God. He's bigger than what you think. He's so big, if I can say it this way, he's so big in that mustard seed. Y'all get that. He's big in that mustard seed. A 10 foot, not tree, bush. He's big in that must see. For with God, all things are possible. I'm closing today. Mark 10, 27. Everybody repeat it with me. With men, it is impossible. But not with God. For with God, oh God, what? All, all things are possible. Let's say it one more time. With men, with men. it is impossible. I was looking at what was the seed was seen in the sight of man. But not with God. Not with God. For with God, oh God. All, things all things are possible. Are possible. Everybody 